Meet Martin Van Cronendonk, geologist and astrobiologist at the University of New South Wales. I sat down with him at his office and we talked all things origin of life-ish. And also he, he is the, one of the people who's supporting this idea of the new origins of life on land. Read all about it here. It's not, on, not in those hydrothermal vents. He thinks it's on land. Let's hear what Martin has to say. My name is Martin Van Crenendonk. I'm a professor at the University of New South Wales and the director of the Australian Centre for Astrobiology. Are we alone? Uh, no, it's just you and I here, so <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> well, what do we know about the earliest evolution of life, about the emergence of life and the evolution of life on this planet? For a very long time, the oldest life on Earth was known to be in rocks that are about three and a half billion years old in the form of stromatolites. And uh, we know that they were made by communities of living organisms in shallow water, you know, accessible to sunlight, but maybe only using the chemical energy from the environment and from the rocks. Um, that's well dated. We know the age very well. And there's just been a recent discovery of, of stromatolites, these microbial community structures in rocks at 3.7 billion years from Greenland. So that's now the real new benchmark for the oldest life on Earth. Now we're interested in life elsewhere, not necessarily on Earth, but we're trying to use Earth as a model that could help us inform, inform us on what could happen elsewhere. Of all the research that you do, what is the most relevant for making guesses, constraining, trying to understand life on other planets? Yeah, so, and, and that's actually changed a lot just in the last year because of some of the finds we've made back up in the Pilbara. So this area is, like I said, that the macroscopic fossils have been known about for a long time, and I, I brought an example along here. So this was um, this is a beautiful example of, of stromatolites, which have very irregular, wrinkly surfaces, uh, little protruding bumps and, uh, and hollows here. This is typical of the complexity of biology. So that was a bacterial mat? Yep, a microbial mat. How long mat. ago? Yep. This is 3.48 billion years 3. ago. 3.48, so about 3.5 yep. billion, 3. billion, billion years billion ago. 3.5 billion years ago. And, and un like I said, until August, this was the oldest evidence of life on Earth. And was that doing photosynthesis? Well, it was in very shallow conditions, so it may have been undergoing photosynthesis, but the problem has been that the Archean, um, the Australian outback where this is found has been under really extreme weathering conditions. And so these surface samples that we have, we can't get any information about the microbial community that made them. So we'd only be guessing to say that if it used photosynthesis or didn't. And that's actually been the exciting find is we thought that these ancient fossils had been in a shallow marine environment, but recent discoveries by one of my PhD students found deposits of a Rotorua or a Yellowstone hot springs on an exposed land surface. And they're intimately related with these stromatolites. And so it looks like they could have been using the chemical energy from these hydrothermal systems as their met metabolic source. Before you get to anything as complex as RNA or even DNA, to bind amino acid molecules together to start making things like sugars, like ribose and stuff, you need the energy of wetting drying cycles to kick out a water molecule that binds those early, quite primitive and very common organic molecules together. So like the deep oceans are out, it's just, forget it, you can't do it. Because all those early organic molecules are hydrophilic. They, 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 you know, they just don't work in water. So are hydrophobic, they don't work in water and stuff. So you need wetting drying cycles. And then if you think of terrestrial hot springs, you know, a, a geyser fountaining up, the edge of the pool, it expands and contracts and so you get wetting drying cycles. And there's a group from Santa Cruz that we're working now in, in California that's been doing experiments and shows that if you put in sort of an organic soup and you do the wetting drying thing, you form lipid membranes that look just like cells and have the same composition of cells. And the cool thing that happens is that when they get dried out, those bubbles open up. And as organic molecules get more complex on the side, then you rehydrate them, they close up again. So you can compartmentalize progressively more complex organic molecules within these lipid... Oh, it's just, it's so exciting. Now, you want to show us some uh, other things here? Yeah, so I've got a couple of other friends along. We've talked about, um, we've talked about hot springs, and so I recently went to New Zealand, um, to Rotorua and the area to look at, um, you know, the signs of life around these hot springs. And this is a sample that was growing just a few months ago on the lip of a hot spring there and is made up of beautifully complex branching small stromatolites. Um, but this is just a, a beautiful sample. This is very fine, silicious mud that they're growing in. But I like this one because it shows the complexity of 
still re relatively simple microbes making these complex branching structures that you know look like a coral reef or a branching tree it or does something. Look like a coral. How long ago was that alive? Well, just literally uh, a couple of months ago. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that you've run across in your student population when you try to tell them some of these this scientific story of Genesis? <laughs> I'd say that I'd say the biggest misconception is that there's consensus on any issue in science <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think I think Newton got a couple of laws pretty right, but in in geology and in uh, geobiology, because we're dealing with very old rocks and we don't see the things squiggling and wriggling still, it's all got a layer of interpretation. 